Hey there, Commanders. A little bit of a late weekend update on the community goal. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you guys a quick tip that I learned from another smaller channel that I found. Uh, Grapple Man Videos. I'll put this on screen so everyone can see the URL up here and the specific video to connect to. I'll also link it in the description. Uh, but he's found an interesting little exploit that should increase take rates compared to hunting for Thargoid meta alloys inside of larger forests. On this planet, AQ-Y, DB-1, Barnacle Site 1, you get a Barnacle Site that will spawn a single Barnacle Shard with only one meta alloy. But unlike the larger forests, where the different shards that spawn the meta alloy can move around with every board flip, for whatever reason, this barnacle is always in the same, or this uh, meta alloy shard is always in the same spot. So you can board flip over and over again, just shooting the same barnacle constantly, which is a huge cheese ball exploit, but it is quite effective. So just to demonstrate it here. All you got to do is get your piece of cargo, get back into the position that you want to be in, execute a quick board flip to the main menu, go right back in, And once you're back in, you just repeat the process. Now, if you look at the timestamp on the video, you can pretty effectively flip every um, minute or so. He claims 45 seconds. I think that's a little bit too optimistic. Um, I think the average will probably be closer to a minute for most players. But, you know, if you can go faster, that means you can work faster. But to frame that 45 seconds in context and explain why it matters here, let me load up the Inara page where we've got the current community goal progress. To reach the top 10, the threshold has actually dropped since my initial update. You need 576 units. If you use this method, let's make the math easy and say it takes you one minute to scoop a meta alloy, board flip, get back in and collect the next one. Uh, that means just to repeat that process, you're looking at 576 minutes. Oh, I meant to look for calculator. So we do 576 divided by 60 minutes, and you're looking at 9.6 hours, unless there's a faster way to do this. And that's just the SRV component of this process to hit the top 10 threshold. Now, as more and more people shoot for top 10 and more and more contributors get in, since my last video, the contributors pool has doubled, um, we're gonna see that floor hopefully continue to drop as more and more people engage with the event. Uh, so hopefully by the time you get up to 400 or so, the floor is actually more achievable, but this is just the scoop loop. This does not take into account the amount of time that it takes to get back to your ship from where you're parked, because once you're uh, loaded up, uh, the Scarab SRV can hold four tons of cargo. You then have to uh, ferry that cargo back to whatever ship you're using. I, in this case, am opting to use a Type 9, because if I totally fill its cargo hold, then I'll easily be in the top 10 percentage threshold. But at 500 tons, you're looking at two Python loads to... Well, roughly two Python loads, depending on how it's fitted. It might be three if you're running with, you know, strong shields and all of the typical fixings of a, a mid-tier combat trader. Um, it might take you even more effort than that. But, um, yeah, it's uh, we're kind of in ouch territory. And this is not the most engaging gameplay in Elite Dangerous. And add to that, every once in a while, as you are board flipping, a Thargoid interceptor will drop out of the sky and hit you with a shutdown field. Which you can run right over by just board flipping before the shutdown pulse happens. As soon as you see that uh, frame shift anomaly warning in your info panel, um, try to scoop any meta alloys that you've got in your immediate vicinity if you happen to have shot the shard. 
and then board flip right away because if it gets down close then you'll start to get the combat danger timeout thing where you have to wait 15 seconds and it's just yeah um, it's a major time sink um, also depending on the size of your ship you can park closer to reduce your SRV uh, drop-off loop and hopefully get your optimized rate back up but that SRV drop-off is between one and two minutes depending on how fast you're able to go so uh, every four of these things you collect, you've got to add another minute. This is quite a, a high expectation to be able to hit the top 10% threshold. Now, if you're trying to get into the lower thresholds, the effort level gets a lot smaller, but it's still still kind of nasty to get the... Uh, just to get the 5A, you have to be in the top 50%, so you need 81 tons, which is actually a lot less effort comparatively. Um, it, to get to top 50 with this method, you're looking at probably two hours on the ground. I, I would be safe and plan on three just to make sure that you don't have to hurry, and that's after you're on site. Because the other issue you've got to contend with is that uh, this system that I'm in right now let me get it up on the info panel so you guys have a good view of it, and I'll try to put it in the notes. Uh, it's pretty far out of the way. And even though the system map shows that there are available planets that you can send carriers, every time that I've tried to send a carrier to this system, it kicks back and says there are no open slots. So you've got to park in an outside system to fly in, and this planet is also, you know, roughly... Let me see if I can bring it up on the system information here. Uh, no, it doesn't say, but um, this this uh, star is a good 150,000, it's more, I think it's a little more than that, light seconds away from the main star that you'll land at here. So it's about, a, it'll take you about 10 minutes once you're in the system to actually fly out here if you're using a uh, Super Cruise Assist module. And I am because I have a life and chores and other things, and I basically just walked into another room and did some stuff for a while and came back and had my ship in orbit. So uh, that's uh, the community goal update with the latest tactics. If you guys have any other questions or comments, uh, go ahead and drop them below. And if you've been working on this and have any faster methods or strategies, uh, please also post them. If there's a good comment, I will pin it so that everybody can see it and uh, hopefully we can coordinate, or hopefully it will help everybody coordinate their individual efforts a little bit more efficiently. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got for today, so I will catch you guys later.